We welcome you to the School of a Spiritual Warfare tonight. My name is Sandy Lopez, Pastor Sandy Lopez, and today we will worship our King of King Jesus Christ. We will study the Word of God by our own Pastor Laura, and we will be giving our offerings through our website, chapelofchange.org. Today, get your notebook ready, get your voice ready as we worship the Lord. But before we go with Miss Queenie, which will lead us into worship, I want to share a verse with you today. As this week, it's the leading of the crucifixion of Jesus. The Bible says on Luke 22, 41, this is when Jesus was in the garden leading to his crucifixion. And he was withdrawn from them about the stone throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven to strengthen him. Let's worship Jesus today, would you? Ensure to share. We welcome you. If you're watching us through Facebook, we welcome you. And let's worship together to our King of King and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, I'm going to open up your hearts tonight as we worship him. Lord Jesus, we welcome you. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. And God, we believe, because yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being Giants are still being slayed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come on and sing with us. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. We are here for you. Oh 
so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. Hallelujah. Come on, people. Come on and declare his word. Declare his promises over our lives. Chains be broken in the name of Jesus. The name above all names, Father God, we worship you. praise you Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus amen so we welcome you today to the school of a spiritual warfare T today my name is Sandy pastor Sandy Lopez and we welcome you tonight we will study God's Word with our pastor and after that we will encourage you to prepare your best offering through uh, our website chapelofchange.org but at this time i'd like to invite you to ensure you have your bible in front of you to ensure you have a pen and a notebook and get ready to be encouraged by the word of god and it is my honor and privilege to welcome our own Pastor Laura Worth. Hallelujah, there is power. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. We need to declare that tonight. There is power, power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
commander-in-chief. You are our lieutenant. You are the general. You give commands and the angels obey. We stand with the angels tonight at attention to your word, Lord God. We desire to seek you. We desire to worship you. We desire to do your will. We ask you this night, oh God, to have your way in our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirit, through and through in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are able and willing to break every chain that has kept us bound. Break every chain that has entangled us and kept us shackled in the name of Jesus. We declare, Lord, that your wonder-working power is working even now in the hearts and the lives of your people. We ask, oh God, great and mighty King, that you have your way tonight. Be thou glorified in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. It means praise the Lord. And it's our first order as believers to worship the Lord, to praise the Lord in spirit and in truth. And so tonight we come together, even though you are uh, not here in the physical sanctuary, you are still a representation of the house of God. Amen. You are a temple where the Holy Spirit dwells in. And we are together tonight in spirit. And my prayer tonight is that the words in God's word will steer you up, encourage you, uplift you, and strengthen you in such a time as this. I want to welcome you again to our school of spiritual warfare. Uh, my name is Laura Worth. I serve as co-pastor with my husband, Brian. And it is our privilege to minister and to uh, speak the word of God to help us as we grow in our walk with God. And so over the last several weeks, we've been going through week by week key areas of spiritual warfare that will help us to be victorious in our walk with God and our fight against the enemy. This is a spiritual fight, and we have been called to wage a good warfare, my brothers and sisters, and to fight a good fight of faith until the end. So tonight, we're going to continue on our path, and I'm actually going to discuss again the topic of angelic reinforcement part two. And so uh, I'm going to talk about this and recap a little bit from last week. And really my goal is to extract three areas specifically that the angels uh, work to assist us as believers here on earth. Now, as I mentioned last week, this is an area of spiritual warfare that many believers lack understanding in. And so we thought that it was absolutely necessary to uh, expand a little bit more in the role that angels play in terms of spiritual warfare. Now, we learned that angels do, in fact, engage in spiritual warfare. They serve to enforce or reinforce God's will for us here on earth. They serve to provide additional assistance and support as needed. Now, I shared an example last week that in the military, the natural military, uh, they, they are given uh, arms, they are given weapons, they have protective gear on, but even then, sometimes they find themselves in the midst of an intense battle where they reach a point that they need additional assistance uh, of troops to help increase the strength of their army. 
I want to remind us again tonight that we are the church. We are the body of Christ and we are the end time warriors and God has given us assistance of troops, angelic troops, warfaring angels to help us also carry out the will of God here on this earth. And so we thank the Lord that he doesn't leave us alone. We thank the Lord that he gives us reinforcement. Hallelujah. Now, angels are defined as messengers, and their primary role is to carry out the will of God. They serve God, and they worship God. The Bible says in Hebrews uh, verse 6, let all the angels of God worship him. The angels of the Lord surround him day and night saying holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory now i want us to understand that that term the lord of hosts is a name or a title ascribed to god frequently all throughout the bible and it is translated as jehovah sabiot Jehovah Sabaoth, and it is used to express the great power of Jehovah, God Almighty, El Shaddai. That word host means army, and it is a reference of the angelic armies of heaven. The Lord of hosts himself commands his angelic army. As a matter of fact, the angels are submitted to him. They stand at attention to do his will and they listen for his command. We read in Psalm 103, verse 20 and 21, it says, Praise the Lord, all you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Angels are powerful the bible says that they excel in strength angels are also on assignment from god by god and there are three specific ways that angels assist you and i in terms of spiritual warfare and number one is that the angels are assigned to protect us <clears throat> they are assigned to protect us. In 2 Kings, we read that the king of Syria was at war with Israel. And he decided to go after the prophet Elijah. Why did he make that decision? I want to remind us that it was Elijah who was hearing the words and the plans that the, that the king of Syria was plotting against Israel and he was hidden in his own bedroom in the secret place of prayer and it was then and because of that that he was able to hear to receive a heavenly download from God and deliver that message of warning to the king of Israel. And so the king of Syria got wind of it and he became enraged because the prophet Elijah was literally sabotaging his strategies. And I want us to turn to the second Kings chapter six, if you have your Bibles with you. And I'm going to start in verse 11. I'm going to read uh, a few verses because I want us to understand what God is doing here. It says in verse 11, therefore... The heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? You see, he couldn't fathom how they were getting these instructions. 
In verse 12, one of his servants says, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And so he said, Go and see where he is, that I might send him and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. And therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with chariots and horses. And his servant said to him, he said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And so he answered him, Do not fear. For those that are with us are more than those that are with them. You see, the prophet understood something. He understood how the spirit realm worked. He knew that so long as he aligned himself with the living God and carried out his will, aligned his will with God, that God was going to provide protection. And so... Elijah, knowing this, prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the young servant, of the young man, and he saw the mountain that was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Now we learned last week in Psalm 34, 7, that the angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. See, Elijah knew that he was already protected. As a matter of fact, the chariots and horses of fire were more in the spirit than they were in the natural. And as a matter of fact, they were even higher than the natural army because they were on the mountaintop. They were watching down and they were waiting for the command of the Lord because they wanted to know how this was going to go down. And in a sense, Elijah already knew that he had backup. He had spiritual backup. He had angelic reinforcement to come in at a moment's notice if necessary. And I thank the Lord that the eyes of the servant were opened so that he too can see what was really happening. I want to remind us, church, tonight that before anything happens in the natural realm, things happen in the spirit realm. There is always a spiritual war that is taking place. And it is up to you and I to co-labor with God to advance his kingdom here on earth. And God has provided us tools and resources and reinforcement. But we need to align ourselves with the will of God so we can ask God to send reinforcement when necessary. We have a part to play. The enemy thought that he had Elijah surrounded. But they themselves were surrounded. You see, even though we have a spiritual enemy that somehow tries to roar like a lion and surround us, seeking to devour us, there is more that be for us than against us. And I want to encourage us tonight. Now is not the time to lay down or to sit down. If anything, now is the time. Now is the place where we can take our place in the spirit realm, our rank, and rise up a mighty men and women who are willing to fight against the enemy, to push back in the name of Jesus the forces of darkness that are coming up against us right now. And if I may add, my brothers and sisters, right now is not the time to relax. Right now is not the time to sit down watching TV all day. Right now is not the time to lay down and take a vacation. Some of you may not be physically at your job, but let me tell you, you are always on call with God. And we should be a people right now who are discerning the times and the seasons to say, Lord, use me in this time to do what you have called me to do. 
Show me, Lord, for those of us that don't know where our place is in the army of God, ask the Lord to show you. Father, I ask that you would release, that you would release, uh, open eyes, Lord God, release spiritual discernment, release, oh God, spiritual insight and eyesight to your people that they may know, Lord God, what it is that you are calling them to do in this moment of time, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you don't leave us alone. I thank you that you still have a plan and a purpose for us, Lord God. So I ask you to bless and to send, oh God, revelation and spiritual understanding to your people tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for the assurance of victory in our life because you rule and you reign and your dominion is from everlasting to everlasting. Number two, angels are assigned to deliver us. I want to take us back to a passage found in Acts chapter 12, starting in verse 5. And here we read that Peter had been put in prison by Herod the king. And Peter finds himself in chains he is literally chained up to the prison guards with no natural way of escape. But I thank the Lord that natural remedies are not what we look to. We look to the divine. We look to God himself. We look to supernatural assistance. And in Peter, in Acts, we find Peter, starting in verse 5 of chapter 12, read with me or uh, look in your Bible with me as I read. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer, I want us to underline that, because prayer is key, and we're going to be talking about warfare prayer next week. We're going to be talking about warfare prayer and we're going to be praying together. But underline that constant prayer was offered to God for Peter by the church. We are the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold... An angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. And so he went out and followed him. And he did not know that what was done by the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. But when they were past the first and second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Can you just picture the angel walking before Peter and he's saying, come quickly, let's go. And they're walking and the doors just open. And he's just he's assigned in that moment to, to deliver Peter from that prison door, from that prison place. That's, that's his assignment. That was the assignment that the angel had that night. He said, go deliver Peter. Why? Because my church is praying. My church is pleading. My church is asking. He said, I'm giving you an assignment. The words of my church have been heard. Send for Peter and deliver him now. That was his assignment that night. And when had Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me. What a powerful testimony to have. And even though you and I may not or not or may never see an actual angel manifest before us and deliver us out of our own troubles, you can rest assured that if you are praying and you are asking the Lord God to rescue you and to deliver you and you are asking the Lord for help, that God will send reinforcement your way. Just as God sent his angel to deliver Peter and to release him from his chains, God today is releasing us from our very own chains, our shackles, our bondage, the things that keep us bound. 
I thank the Lord that he is sending forth his angelic hosts, his angel army to help us even now in our time of need. He's releasing us from prison, out of bondage, and into freedom. Thank you, Father, for the freedom that you give. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We thank you. You are the great I am. And number three, the angels are assigned to fight. They are assigned to fight. There are passages in the Old Testament where the angels were fighting. They were actually on the ground, on the battleground fighting on behalf of God's people. But I want to, I want to take us to, to a particular passage tonight that I believe is fitting for this week that we are in. And I want to take us to the book of Matthew. Chapter 26, starting in verse 9. Now on this particular night, Jesus found himself in the garden of Gethsemane. And he was about to be betrayed and arrested. And as it happened, he was confronted by a crowd that was carrying swords and clubs. And Judas, who was one of the twelve, was there to deliver him into the hands of the enemy. And in Matthew 26, starting in verse 9. It reads, immediately, he, being Judas, went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Now, we obviously know the answer to that question because he had just told his disciples, Behold, my betrayer is at hand. But God always asks us a question. And I believe, I would like to believe in my own way that he's always giving us a final chance to repent. To turn from our sin and the thing that we are about to do, even in that moment, that second, to turn around and turn back to Jesus, asking him for help and mercy. And then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and he drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, he said, put your sword in its place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. But I want to highlight the next verse found in verse 53. Because this is a revelation and it's insight. And it's what Jesus said to his disciple. He said, or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? I want us to understand that one legion of angels was approximately 6,000 soldiers. And 12 legions, according to the words of Jesus, would have been approximately 72,000 angels. And he said he could have had even more than that. Can you imagine Jesus praying to the Father and saying, send forth 12 legions of angels and in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, 72,000 angels could have literally descended from heaven onto the Garden of Gethsemane immediately surrounding those men that had been sent to capture Jesus. Obviously, Jesus chose the will of the Father and not his own will. But I believe that Jesus gave us these very words to reveal to us insight into how things work in the spirit realm. You see, the angels hearken to the voice of the Lord. They stand at attention 
to do his will, listening for his commands. And here Jesus reminds us that we too can pray to the Father and ask him to send forth a legion of angels if necessary to deliver us or in this case to fight for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Warrior angels, warfaring angels are constantly 24-7 ready and willing to be dispatched on our behalf. Will we call upon the Father? Will we bend our knees in the midnight hour? Will we ask God himself to send forth his warfaring angels to help us or those around us? Will we ask God even now to send forth his angels to fight and to push back this invisible enemy called the coronavirus? To fight against these spirits of infirmity, these plaguing spirits that have been attacking the people of God. Will you join me? Will you join us in praying? Will you sacrifice your sleep and your rest? Will you wake up when the Lord wakes you up? Will you call upon the Father and say, send forth your angels now, Lord God. Help us. Deliver us. Heal us. Restore us. And we shall be restored. Warrior angels, ready and willing. I want to remind us in 2 Kings 10, 1935, that one angel, one single angel put to death 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in one night. And I want us to know that if one angel can put to death 185,000 soldiers, how many more can a legion of angels put to death or push back the works of darkness that are creeping up against us? I want to remind us first and foremost that angelic help comes from God. And angelic help brings glory to God because we get to witness and we get to testify of the glory of God that had it not been for God who was on our side, we would have perished. Angels are never our focus. God is. The Bible says, from whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, who neither sleeps nor slumbers. That is the God that we serve. Psalms 121, 2. He is the Lord of hosts. He is Jehovah Sabaoth. He is the Lord of angel armies. He is God Almighty. He is El Shaddai. Adonai, the master and the Lord of all. I want to pray for us in a moment, but I want to close our time tonight by a wonderful scripture that is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. It is such an encouragement to us in these last days that the Bible says to us, but you have come to Mount Zion to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you even now for sending forth your reinforcement, your warfaring angels to fight with us and to fight for us, to advance your kingdom and to carry out your plans and purposes and your very will here on earth. 
Father, we ask tonight that you would give us spiritual strength, Lord God, that you would take us to a new level, to a new season, to a new dimension in our faith, that, Lord God, we too can take up our rank in the spirit realm and fight like soldiers that you've created us to be, Lord God, the army of the living God, the church of God, by which the gates of hell shall not prevail against have your way in our life tonight, tomorrow, and forever. We worship you and we glorify you together with the angels. And we say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord who is and was and is to come. We bow before you today and we say, have your way, oh, high and lifted up. We exalt you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, church. Stay on your knees and stay alert. God bless you. Pastor Sandy. Praise you, Jesus. Deliver us and to fight for us. That should be a reason why we worship the Lord because he is powerful and has not leave us alone. Thank you, Pastor Laura, for that powerful message tonight. And if you're family of Chapel of Change at this time, we encourage you to give the best offering for the Lord today. We invite you to go to chapelofchange.org and just click that button that says give and you'll be able to support our church at this time of need. And also, I wanted to share with you that uh, this Sunday, we are going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we will be going live at 10, 15 a.m. There's two ways that you are able to, to be part of this celebration at 10 15 on sunday you could go to chapelofchange.org or you could go to our face page book at chapel of change paramount and you'll be able to do that uh, again i wanted to remind you if you are in the need of food if you need the essentials to eat this week or if you're being blessed with extra food, we will invite you this Sunday. We will be able to, you will be able to deliver or to pick up food. We will be uh, doing this in two locations at our Carson campus at 9 a.m. You will be able to either pick up if you need food or to donate food for those in need. Also, at the Paramount campus at 12 p.m., you will be able to do that as well. And at 5 o'clock at our, our Carson campus, you will, be ha you will have that opportunity to either pick up food or uh, donate food. In addition to that, my brothers and sisters, I wanted to remind you that on Sunday, uh, we do have our drive through church. Yes. You heard it right, our drive through church. When uh, at 12 o'clock here at Paramount or at 9 o'clock at Carson or 5 o'clock in Carson, you'll be able to do three things. One is if you have extra food to bring it and you don't have to get out of your car, you will be in the comfort of your car, abiding to the six feet distancing, you'll be able to drop off food. Two, you could, you are able to pick up food if you need food. If you, I don't, we don't want you as a family, as our faith, as your faith family to go without food. So please go to our drive through church. Third, if you are not able to support our church via online, you are able to give your tithes and offerings through our drive through church with your ATM. We will have some people there ready to help you. And also you could give with the uh, with check 
on the tithing box. Those are the two things, the three things that you could do on our drive through church. In addition to that, if you need prayer, I want to tell you that this last Sunday, I see Pastor Laura and some leaders praying. If you need prayer, we still abide into the six uh, uh, feet dist distancing law. Amen. We need to abide to that. But we welcome you uh, to come through a drive through church on that day. So at this time, uh, my brothers and sisters, I wanted to close out in a prayer um, and uh, in behalf of our senior pastor, Brian Worth, and we welcome you all. I saw you logged in too. Um, we welcome everybody who has logged into our Chapel of Change Facebook page. But in behalf of our senior pastor, Brian and Laura Worth and all the leadership, we thank you for tuning in. But before we go... I want to bless you in a prayer. Let's pray together where you are right now. Just raise your hand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your endless love. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for you and me so that we could leave. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For teaching us that we are able to summon angels to come, to help us, to protect us, to fight for us, and to deliver us. Go in the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody says, Amen and amen. God bless you all. God bless you, the whole family of Chapel of Change. May you enjoy this week and remember that this week we are to worship the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. God bless you all.